to introduce things that we'll be, be, be talking in the, in the afternoon. Um, there's this guy, uh, Nicholas Carr, an American journalist. In 2003, he wrote a, a, an article on the Harvard Business Review that is a very influential business uh, journal that is read by most of the eagles of the world, the, the, when, I, when I mean the CEOs. And, and, he, and the title of his paper was IT Doesn't Matter, which is bad business for us, right? I mean, if, if IT doesn't matter, of course, well, this, this has been, again, 20 years ago, right? Uh, this sort of reflected that same idea that the Nobel Prize um, had expressed some 20 years before, still in the 1980s, 87, 88 or so, uh, where we had established what is called the productivity paradox of IT. Right? A lot of people challenging the investments made in, in IT and saying that IT was not bringing profit to the organizations. Right? This is, as I say, a huge problem for us, would, or at least would be a huge problem if the world trusted these guys. Right? Apparently, the world read what they, they, they had to say, but didn't trust them because they, they kept spending money in IT. But it's still a challenge. You know, why, why did the, these guys say that IT didn't matter or that IT was not uh, an efficient use of money? Simply because they were, they were calculating things and noticing that, um, that in fact, the money that was being spent in, in technology was not being recovered in, in, in business they they have this term the, the um, that re reflects the time it it needs for an investment to be uh, recovered, which is the payback time. Right? They were saying it's not paying back. Uh, fortunately, nowadays uh, this is not a big issue, uh, but well, it's not a big issue in the in the sense that well, companies still keep spending uh, in spite of these guys alerting. This does not pay back, uh, but that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be a concern for us. Why, why didn't it pay back? Why doesn't it still pay back many times? It's because there are decisions, well, there are many, many possible explanations. One of them, decisions are poorly made. Money is spent in the wrong technologies. Uh, more money is spent or, 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 or value is destroyed in the sense that uh, being the money spent in the wrong uh, technologies or, in the, or at the wrong time or whatever, uh, that technology doesn't help create more value than it destroys. So there's a, a lot of uh, uh, problems there. What, what happened most in the 90s was that companies still didn't know. They, they knew that the, 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 the IT was going to be uh, was going to revolutionize business, but they didn't know exactly how. And they were they were shooting in every direction, every, every direction. Even, they, even now in blockchain. Uh, Fear Pardon? The fear of missing the fear out. The fear of missing out. In fact, yeah, that's precisely it. Or many also say the 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 the, the feeling that they should go along with the crowd because being uh, uh, not being with the crowd would mean that they would uh, not survive later on. Um, what Nicholas Carr says in this uh, paper of uh, his. Uh, is not really that IT doesn't matter. I, I suggest that you read afterwards. In, in fact. Uh, uh, you know, all, all the, the uh, what well, I don't like talking about exam very much because I, I don't prepare you for an exam, right? I prepare you. For, I hope I, I can prepare you for, for for a better life as professionals. But at the same time, we, we do have an exam, uh, and uh, and the exam has a good reason for happening. Uh, otherwise, we postpone things, right? We if we don't have uh, an exam, we'll say, well, this is cool. This I, I have to, to do that, but I will do it when I have time, and uh, and we never get the time. So, in the exam, I have. Uh, chosen one broad question about each of the papers that I'm suggesting you here. Okay? Uh, I think you're possibly able to solve that even based on what we discuss in class or maybe re-watching the recording uh, that, I, that I do of this, right? But uh, again, uh, you can learn much more if you, instead of just trusting me, you, you read what these guys uh, said. They're usually, uh, I can already assure you, for people in the, in the more technical areas, these guys that write for business uh, journals, like the Harvard Business uh, Review here, they write long texts. For one reason, in, in technology, mainly in digital technology times, 
It's either A or B, right? It's either zero or one. In business, it depends. It all depends. So there's a lot of circumstances to, to, to be uh, cared about. And they have to deal with all those possibilities. And so um, this is a, a, a warning that I already have to make to you. You will probably feel a little impatient with the text being long tests. Many of these papers are 15 pages long. Right? So by the end of all the papers that you have to read here, you will have read more than a, a book for sure. Uh, at the same time, and, and, and some of them, I, I, I will tell you, uh, uh, you know, well, the, the main idea is this one. And I'm only afraid that uh, if you keep to the main idea that I will tell you, you know, two weeks from now, you won't remember even the main idea. But if you read the whole thing, you will be able to say, well, the main idea, as Alex had already stressed, and as, as from what I understood here, it is uh, this one. And this can be there for life. Right? The main idea for, for Nicholas Carr was splitting the use that we make of technologies in organizations in two kinds of technologies. One, uh, he's talking specifically about information technology, right? Uh, and by the way, whenever I mention technology here, it's always going to be information technology. Um, he, he says that, they, that there are two ways, uh, two, two types of technology. One that is infrastructural technology, technology that you will use uh, and your competitors are also going to use, and everyone will be using the same technology, preferably, because being in the same network uh, gives benefit to everyone. Right? So for infrastructure technology, we want to have exactly the same technology as everyone else. One example of that would be, for example, if, uh, if I'm going to use a, a word, pro uh, word processor, I will, I'm going to use Microsoft Words. Why? Because there is an advantage of using a technology that my supplier uses, and if I want to send a file, if I want to, you know, write something together with them, uh, I, I want my technology to be compatible to theirs, right? Uh, and there are other technologies that uh, will be that we will want to have as proprietary technologies, or as uh, Nicholas Carr explains, technologies that we use. To, to benefit from. We, we want that technology to provide us with an advantage uh, with respect to the rest of the markets. Nicholas Carr says that uh, proprietary technologies are risky. And he says developing that kind of technology is something that you should avoid if you can. He says stick to the... the and, but, but we have to understand that Nicholas Carr is not talking to companies in the IT field that develop technologies to sell as infrastructure technologies to others, right? He's talking about the business in general. He's, he's thinking, for example, about a company that uh, builds this furniture here for classrooms at Ezijalek and tells them, look, you don't want to develop proprietary, uh, proprietary technology, your IT proprietary uh, technology, because your business <coughs> is building tables and, and chairs and so on and so forth. and." Uh, you, what you need to focus on is the infrastructure technology. Make sure that you, <coughs> that you have IT that supports your business, but do not try to uh, be fancy about it because it's not going to change uh, what you do or whatever. Right? So <coughs> notice it, it, <coughs> that although uh, it may be shocking when someone writes IT doesn't matter, what he's saying is First, try to differentiate. If a technology, if you are a company that is not in the IT field, you have to be very conservative with respect to technology because new technology costs a lot of money and, and many times brings a lot of risk. You, his advice is make sure that you, you're there with the technology that has already been tested, that works fine, and that will support your business and allow you to be more efficient doing what you do. Don't try to be too creative here. Uh, and of course, uh, as he's not talking to the, the IT companies, he keeps saying developing uh, proprietary technology doesn't is it, too risky. Don't do that. Of course, we see a lot of uh, companies be, being very successful developing technology. So uh, Nicholas Carr either considers that they are exceptions, or that they are not the companies uh, to whom he's talking about. He's talking about companies in general, right? Uh, and, and notice that, for example, even Microsoft, Microsoft has a, uh, uh, Microsoft's products 
are infrastructure technology for everyone else. Right? They, they want us to perceive their technology as they don't want the, the, to tell us buy Microsoft's products and you will become the best in the world in, in your field. They say buy Microsoft products because it will help you do your stuff. Right? You're not going to do it any better, but it will help you do uh, your stuff at a reasonable cost. Right? Um, so they try, uh, the dream of uh, any company is to impose it, the technology of any, techno any IT company is to impose its, its technology as infrastructure technology to the rest of the world. But they keep their technology as proprietary technology, right? So if you think of uh, Microsoft's products to Microsoft, they are proprietary products because Microsoft uh, sees those products as being able to provide it uh, uh, a competitive edge in the markets, to, to provide it with uh, the possibility of succeeding in the markets. Right? Does that make sense to you? Uh, be conservative with respect to, to technology if you are uh, if you're a company that does something uh, else and, and you're not the technology developer and if you're the technology developer well then in that case we'll have to say well you have to risk because your your business is creating the new and making the new old and established right uh, this is why for example Google used to be such an, an innovative company 10 15 years ago and now became another bureaucratic company Okay, it's a bureaucratic co company that still has a slide and, 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 and for, for the, the employees and some fancy stuff because that's what they, they had from the beginning. But nowadays it's a more, much more conservative company than it was at the beginning because they settled their products as or their products as being the, the infrastructure uh, technology for others. Right? So there's no huge polemic here uh, uh, in, in in uh, Nicholas Carr's uh, paper, but I, I, I still think it's a paper that uh, deserves uh, being read because sometimes, again, if you want to develop the perspective of the ego, right? If you want to see the whole forest, you have to see to, to try and understand how the CEO thinks, because you're going to sell your technology to these guys later, and these are the guys that read papers like the, the one that uh, Nicholas Carr wrote. Of course, the CEO of today may not read uh, this paper any longer because it's a 2003 uh, uh, paper, and then they, they probably don't remember it any longer. But at the same time, this is sort of already in, in, the, in their culture because he read this. Uh, he, well, he or or, or his his boss in the past read this a few years uh, ago and still has this idea. So we have to understand the mindset of those who take the decisions in the organizations if we want to influence their decisions somehow. Okay. So this is going to be our the, the, the first uh, paper that I uh, suggest you read. Uh, let me just very quickly uh, include it here. And uh, and uh, I, 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 I believe uh, summarizing the, the the idea of the paper in those uh, aspects of of uh, it, it talking about a a competitive advantage and saying that in most cases we want to just have infrastructure technology and let me see where is but fine pardon yeah. uh, uh, it's uh, this one is saying that it's 27 pages but it's not it's uh, well, well, why I, let, let's see why it's because no it's it's up to here see let me see it finished on page 12 and then we have here uh, uh, someone, an editor. I think that this is just uh, this is uh, someone else. Uh, you know, the, the debate that it generated there, right? But but again, the page, the the, pap the papers are going to be ten pages, fifteen pages, many times. And at the beginning, uh, well, when I had when I when I when I had three weeks here with with you guys, I would say definitely read it before the classes. Huh? Um, you you will see that in our in our program here. Uh, I, I have pl what I have planned for, for each session and, and I will try to do that but you don't have to read it beforehand uh, if you can't uh, well we have class today in the morning and the afternoon then tomorrow you don't have class with me but I guess you have class with someone else right so if you wanna at least browse if you, if you can browse whatever we're going to discuss in the day have, have a look at it uh, before that that will already be helpful right uh, and again one technology that I didn't have in the past I will try and record uh, our, our class although the, the first part of the, the class today in the, the morning 
my my recording shut in the middle here and, and it didn't go through. Uh, but that that's also something that you can you can uh, use as as an additional you know source of information before the exam and, and everything. But the reason I want you to to, to read is it, it, there, I, I would say this course has a lot of reading to be done. And the reason I believe the reading is important it, it is because it helps you. Either things that we discuss here, you read, and then you then it reinforces uh, those ideas. Uh, it, it's ideas that uh, you will probably start using very soon, because when we we are already doing an internship or we are in an organization, we have we start already thinking. Oh, so this, you know, you, you start developing that that perspective of the ego that I believe that we have to have if we want to succeed, even in a very technical career, because at least it helps us better advertise or better communicate what we are doing to, to, to other people that have the broader view of the, the, the problem, we, we, if we have some of that, that view also, okay? <laughs>